Well, today I'm going to talk about shade gardening, in particular shade perennials. Well, of course, we are in Pennsylvania, which basically means woodland, Penn's woods. Typically, we'll have natural woodland shade. Whether it's a, a hemlock evergreen like this or a lot of the deciduous trees, gives us a chance to grow a variety of wonderful shade perennials. And I always like to start off with uh, choosing a few native plants. And I've done around below here, in this little nook next to the garden shop here at Greystone Gardens. First of all is this Trillium. It's a double white flowering one. It hasn't quite turned white yet. It's a bit green, but an interesting plant. Typically the Trillium is either the white or the red one. And this is a white double flowering one. This is the foliage of a bloodroot. Well, I took a photograph early on, and if you look at this, you can just see what a wonderful plant it is. They're only about four inches high, but look at those double white flowers. They really are beautiful. And then, of course, the foliage, like it is now, quickly extends and gives all the energy back into the roots so it can flower next year. This tends to be a kind of a full shade area. What I want to show you now is a partially shaded area and some of the more exciting plants you can grow in those conditions. Well, this area, um, as you can see, I'm getting the sunlight on me, gets some morning sun. And then by usually about 12 o'clock, one o'clock, the sun is over and this trellis has plants on the other side that block it. So we get no light, no direct light later in the day. Fairly bright though, there's brightness coming off the macadam. And uh, uh, the plants that grow here seem to do extremely well. We raise the bed off the ground. If you can do that and get a little bit more drainage around it, then your options for growing perennials become much, much better. All right, starting here with a shrub though, this is a quince that's fading. And right down below me is a hellebore, which has been flowering now for probably about five weeks. That's a Lenten rose. This glorious little uh, bell-like flower, it looks like daffodil foliage. It is actually a bulb, it will come up, it comes up in um, deciduous woodland and will flower, the leaves come out in the trees and then it goes back, just like a daffodil, back into the ground. But the real glory here though are these Brunera, Siberian bug gloss. These are the variegated forms. There's lots on the market now and I think they all do really well. This time of year they have these little forget-me-not like flowers. But what's really neat, rather than the forget-me-not where the foliage dies down, these get better and better. So those variegated leaves get bigger and it will give a splash of silver in this partial shaded area. A little ground cover down there, Sweet Rudruff. It's got a different, brighter green kind of a very kind of a lively, lush look. And then look, there's even a, a little daffodil, one of the late daffodils still got a, a bloom on it. It is fading a bit, look at that. So remember when you buy daffodils, buy early season, mid season, and a few late ones, and they'll go on forever. Well, I got up very early this morning to make my selection. Uh, our shade house still has the winterized plastic on to protect the plants over the winter, but today we take it off. The sun is shining and I think the frost has gone away. So let's roll these selections over to somewhere where we can demonstrate them very clearly. Well, let's start with a real classic. Now, people just love this plant. It's a columbine, and this is a particularly nice one. Uh, columbines are sometimes not the longest lived. What I suggest people to do to get the effect of having a woodland carpet with columbine is to buy several plants and let the seed heads dry because they do seed themselves quite freely, and you're never quite sure what ones you're going to get. One of the big problems I find is that people go out and mulch very early. So all the little seeds haven't started or are just germinating and then they get covered in three inches of mulch, which will kill them. So if you're trying to grow columbine, leave an area that you're not going to mulch and let them germinate. And when they're bigger, maybe you can put a bit of mulch around them. All right, another little kind of ground cover, which I think is a fantastic native plant. This is a tiarella or foam flower. And here you can actually see why it's called a foam flower. And this one, uh, this one's called Angel Wings. It's got a particularly nice dark leaf center. Look at that. This is a Japanese painted fern. And this one is called Godzilla. And it's called Godzilla for a reason, because it's pretty big. Uh, typically, they're low and they spread out sideways. Look at what you can get in the shade. So any dark green leaves are not going to show up. But if you have a splash of silver in them, then uh, uh, they're going to stand out a little bit more. This is silver and a little bit of red on there. Now, another real desirable plant is a bleeding heart. The flowers look like hearts that are bleeding. Quite simple. Uh, this is the yellow form. And in a shade garden, it's going to stand out a lot better than the uh, typical green leaf with pink flowers. If you want one to flower all summer long, not quite as big, this is kind of a more Asian variety. Uh, shade garden, we have to talk about hosta. I brought two along. There are hundreds of varieties of hosta. 
Now the problem with hosta is that the deer absolutely love them. Look at the color on that leaf. That's a variety called June. And this one is called Silly String. And you can see why. The leaves are doing all kinds of weird things. For hard, dry shade areas, the dead nettles, the lamium, this one's called Purple Dragon, will spread and cover quite a large area. And again, the silver on the leaf allows you to see it. It's a splash of white or reflected light in the shade garden. And talking of deer resistant, this is one of the uh, Japanese wood grasses. It will grow in quite uh, deep shade. Uh, it makes a splash of yellow like you can't believe. It's not really going to flower that much. It does have some inflorescence, but it's really the leaf you're growing for it all. And right behind it, even though it looks small now, this will form almost like a shrub, two to three feet with deep purple leaves. Plant the yellow in front of this and you have a wonderful combination, all a contrasting combination, all summer long. Now, a classic out of uh, my experience as a child in England is ladies mantles. It's used everywhere as an edger. <clears throat> it's a lovely plant because the, the rain forms little silver drops on it. It has kind of a chartreuse colored flower that looks very good. Now talking of flowers, this has got to be my champion. This little, they call it a yellow bleeding heart. It's not really a bleeding heart, Corydalis. It comes up early, it flowers early, and it is one of the last things to stop flowering. It takes a heavy frost in October to stop it, and it will seed everywhere in your yard if you want it. So there you go, some selections for your partial shade or shade garden. There's an awful lot more. Um, if you want to come down and ask me any questions about your shade garden, I'd love to see you down here at Greystone Gardens. And thanks for watching.